How you doing? I'm Matt. Today we're going to build this awesome DIY storage chest. You can use this inside as a to store blankets, quilts, toys. We're actually going to use this on our deck as a storage ottoman because my wife wanted to be able to put our covers in here and not blankets or quilts, but the kind that we cover our sectional with, our table, and a place to kick our feet up and relax a little. Let me see you kick your foot up. Did y'all see that? It barely made it on the camera. <laughs> Very easy build, free plans available, link in the description below. Let me show you how I did it. So the first thing we gotta do is cut out the boards that's gonna make up the side and end panels. Very easy, just cut six, one by six is 36 inches long and then six, 22 and a half inches long. And that's gonna make both sides of your box. Once that's done, I just lay out the holes where the pocket holes are going to do, and I just split them evenly. I'm going to use my Masca M2 pocket hole jig set on a three quarter inch setting here. We're going to start drilling pocket holes. Two per board, evenly spaced, very easy. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon next to it so you get notified of all of our new content. After the pocket holes, I just sanded everything to 120 grit, glue, pocket hole screws, and a face clamp to help everything stay lined up. It's all you need. Make up all four panels. There'll be a link in the description below to the tools and supplies I'm using in this build. When you're assembling these panels, make sure to keep both ends aligned as perfectly as you can. Also, if you don't have a jointer or anything, I didn't join any of these boards. I just factory edge to factory edge. It'll give it a little more detailed look. The only size screw you're gonna need for this project is an inch and a quarter pocket hole screw. This is an extremely easy beginner woodworking project that you can do with minimal tools and minimal experience. There's free plans available, linked in the description below. Next thing we're gonna do is cut out the legs. So I'm gonna set my table saw at two and three quarters of an inch and rip four boards, two and three quarters of an inch wide by 19 and a quarter long. Then I set the table saw at two inches and I rip four boards, two inches wide by 19 and a quarter inches long. So I actually just ripped all of these parts out of the two inch. So if you haven't noticed, I've been using CMT blades recently on my miter saw and table saw. If you use the code in the description below at taytools.com, you can get 10% off. These are really, really good blades. Once we have the leg parts cut out, we just use our one of a kind glue spreader and some wood glue. Glue them edge to edge here. What you're gonna wind up with is a two and three quarter by two and three quarter leg. You wanna join them edge to edge. I just use pin nails to hold them while the glue dries. If you don't have a brad nailer or a pin nailer, you can just clamp these and leave them clamped until the glue is dry. We got all our sides made and our legs and now it's time to start assembling the box. It's pretty simple actually. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna assemble it upside down. It's always easier to do that. The, the wider side I'm gonna to put to the front. This is the front of my box. And I'm just gonna turn, we got it upside down. We're gonna lay it on the bench so that this and this are flush on the bench. That way when you flip it over, they're flush on the top. This is also gonna give it a little more detail than if we just uh, put some legs on there that were flat against the face here. So all we're gonna do is put glue in there and then brad nail it or pin nail it in place. It's just gonna hold it for the glue to dry. You're gonna spread that glue with that one of a kind glue spreader you got. Once the glue is spread out pretty good, now I just clamped it on there because I wanna check and see if this is flush down here or what's gonna be the top. If that's not flush, you can adjust it now before you attach it. We've got it flush to this face and we've got it all the way against the end grain of those boards. And we're just gonna attach those. You can use brad nails, finish nails. You can leave it clamped until the glue dries if that's what you wanna do. So your assembly should look something like that. I'm gonna assemble the other end, but just to show you, your side pieces will go on exactly the same way, except for they're gonna go into this groove. We're gonna clamp those down nail those into place so that the glue dries.
Now that the box is assembled, we gotta build the bottom. And on mine, because it's going outside, I left gaps in there. So I just used four one by sixes that I cut 34 and 5 eighths inches long and then drilled two pocket holes on each end. Then I sanded to 120 grit. Then I just attached them flush with the bottom. After the bottom is installed, I ripped out two inch pieces and then cut them to fit the size that I needed to go as trim. We're gonna do this on the top and the bottom all the way around. Then I just cut those, test fit them in place. And then once I figured out that I liked the way it looked, then I used glue and pin nails again to hold it in place. If you don't have a pin nailer, again, you can just clamp these until they're dry. This gives the box a whole lot more detail than just leaving it without. It's very simple to do. These are all square cuts. Next thing we're doing is cutting out the top. We're gonna to need five pieces that are 37 and 5 eighths inches wide. Now make sure to measure your box to make sure that's accurate, but we're gonna rip one of those down to a smaller strip. Drill our pocket holes, get ready to just put glue and pocket hole screws in and attach four of those five pieces together. Once you have those together, take a measurement on your box for the depth and then measure and mark that depth onto your top. And then we're gonna rip that last piece out with the table saw. It should be about three and five eighths inches wide. Once that's ripped, you're just gonna attach it to the top. And for the top, I just cut some two inch strips and attach them to the top. Make sure you leave some space on the front and back so that it can open and close. And then I just attach those with glue and brad nails. All that's gonna do is help it be a little more rigid so that the top doesn't flex and warp over time, especially since this one's going outside. Ain't look good, ain't it? So we got everything, we got it trimmed out. Next, I gotta sand all this, but first I wanna go ahead and put the top on because I gotta mount the top and then take it back off so we can stain it. Here's the top. I just put those extra supports under there so that it doesn't cut on us later. It's just glue and some brad nails is fine. Now let's see how she fits. Pretty good. Not perfect, but it's not a clock. It's just a storage box. You've got like, and there's like a 32nd or 16th uh, overhang right there. It, it'll be fine. You wouldn't even know it if I ain't told you. And yours is gonna be the same way. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this. We're gonna put the hinges on the back. I'll show you how to do that. And then we will sand this and get it stained and ready to go. I am gonna chamfer these edges so that they are not sharp. I may actually chamfer the inside of all of this. Yeah, I think I might. And then of course the corners, top. I like chamfering. Link in the description below to plans for this as well as all the tools and supplies used in this build. So I picked up these hinges at a local hardware store and attached them. You see me trying to figure out which way I wanted to put them. This is actually the only way they would work. So I attached those. I'd use my spring-loaded nail punch to mark the holes where they go. That way when I pre-drill my holes, the drill bit wouldn't move on me. I would actually be able to drill those holes more accurately. Then we just attach those with the provided screws and also attached a handle on the front to help open and close the lid. Then I use a 45 degree chamfer bit on my palm router, then routed the inside and outside edges of the whole box, except for the top. I left it flat so that when you close the lid, it closes flat. Then I sanded to 120 grit and everything is looking good so far. Now let me show you how I'm gonna stain this and make it outdoor ready. If you wanna use this outdoors, it needs to be treated with something that's gonna give it a little weather resistance. This is what we're gonna use. So like on our outdoor sectional build, we're using this Cabot Australian Timber Oil. It's in jar of brown color. Now I put that in my Home Right Finish Max sprayer and sprayed it on. You can brush this stuff on, but it's really thin, like 
water thin. So you're just gonna spray light coats, be careful of runs. And then what I did was spray the bottom of the box first so that I could get the underside of that trim as well as the bottom. Then I flipped it over, sprayed the inside of the box and then all four sides. And it takes this stuff about 48 hours to dry. So make sure you check the weather. You're not gonna have any rain for a couple of days. Then we just reattach the lid using the same screw holes that we created earlier. And as Miss 731 unrolls and packs up this cover, you'll notice a little block of wood under the lid there. That was just so that the lid could dry while, after it was attached. Now she can kick her feet up and relax now that she's got a place to store those outdoor covers. If you haven't seen the matching sectional build, there's a link at the end of this video that takes you right to that build. It's a really cool, easy build as well. Hey, if you like this video, click that box right there. It's gonna take you to the outdoor DIY sectional build we did a few weeks ago. Clicking that box gets you a big old virtual fist bump. Thank you so much for watching.